today's exercise, you'll see that we're going to page 6.8 and we've got our symbol here. You'll see that the cone is, the trapezium is on the left side, which means obviously that it's in first angle orthographic projection. Okay. So if we go back here, you'll see that there's the front view. I'm just looking at a few features. There's a cutting line AA going through it. Okay. And then this B is for an auxiliary view later on. And then you can see that there's an XY line on the left and the right side and on the base, which means you're going to have a side view here, a side view here, and a top view here. So obviously this is going to be the right, uh, the left view. That's going to be the right view. And this is going to be the top view. So in first angle orthographic, the left view is on the right side, the right view is on the left side, and the top view is actually below. Okay. So if we go here, but now, you have to be very careful when reading this in the exam. The first part is obviously straightforward. They say sectional right to left view, top view, no problem. But then here, this fourth bullet, it reads, draw a, f a view. And that's the key there. Draw a view showing the true shape of the section on kind of plan A in the direction of B. So that's the direction B they're talking about there. But now in the exam, if it reads something like, um, determine and draw the true shape of the section. Then you're actually not required to draw the entire view, okay? Then you're only going to do the actual surface that's cut. So when they say draw a view, you draw the entire view. When they say draw or determine the true shape, then you don't draw the entire view, but we'll discuss that another time when we have a drawing that has an example like that. Okay, so it's, then also below that, it reads, all constructions must be shown. Now, this is a bit of an oddity because normally when we draw sectional views, clearly all the views are cut except for the front view. We don't add even detail on it. So it's a little bit on the weird side, but because they specifically tell you to add it, you must do so as well. Okay, but if they don't specifically say add constructions, then you won't add any hidden detail to... Uh, a sectional view. So you'll might still add in detail to a front view, but not to a sectional top view, for example. Okay. Then if you go to the actual drawing, you'll see I've actually started like this. Okay. So here's our front view. There's the cutting line going through it. So you'll have to redraw this. Okay. And then I'm going to have an X3, Y3. So you'll see here the front view is separated by the sectional left view with the XY and the front view separated by the top view with the XY line. And the same between this auxiliary view of the base. So there you can clearly see the base is a hexagon and this front view. Now, this line has to be parallel with that base or if you will, 90 degrees or perpendicular with the center, okay? The gaps there do not matter. You can make that up yourself. Okay, so if you want to have 0.5 resting on the line, that's fine. There must just be a gap between the views, but the line must be there. Okay, then I'm going to number it. Now, the numbering doesn't count. You don't have to do it. You can number it differently than I. You can go A, B, C, D. Um, but I'm going to number the auxiliary 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, if you don't number, the views actually become very, very difficult to do. So from this side, I see one and six. So obviously there are two hexagonal bases. So this corner is in fact one and six. So there's a one in front and behind this line one, there's a line six as well. So it's a line, not just a point. So there's a one and a one and a six and a six. And the same for this one, we see two first and then five. So we see the corner of two in front and then we see five behind it as well. And the next one also is three and four. So we see corner of four and then uh, three, I mean, and then four behind it. So that's kind of important to understand. Okay, so this is going to be something that you have to construct beforehand. The angle of that base to the horizontal plane that you see here, that angle there is 30 degrees. Okay, so while the center is parallel with a vertical plane behind the front view, the base is at 30 degrees to the horizontal plane below it. Okay. Okay, so now we want to start with the sectional left view, but we have to draw it as normal first. So to start with that, what I'm going to do, 
We're going to plot our points. Now, there's more than one method that you can apply to be able to find any single view. So what I'm going to do is, before we start with a sectional view, we're first going to be drawing it as a normal view and then cut it afterwards, okay? This is not the only approach that you can take, but it's certainly the safest route you can follow. So for example, we know that there are two bases and there are six points on each side. So I'm going to project one and six, two and five, and three and four. So then the rule is, if I draw the construction lines across and I want to find the points that I want to plot here on the left view, you go, the rule is you go back over two XY lines. So I go on this line and I go back to the previous view and I hit the first XY line. Then I follow the line, follow the line, I go to one and six. Then I go back to the previous view. Now the only other view that I have is auxiliary view above it. So I go back, 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 I hit the second XY line, and then I can measure six, and I can, from the XY line, I can measure one. And there you can see that the distance for six is the same there, and the distance for one from the XY is the same there as well. And that will apply, obviously, now for all these points. So I can measure from the XY to five, to two, to four, and to three. If you do the same for the bottom base point, you'll actually see that it looks exactly the same. And there's the points. So you can actually now go and connect it, and you'll see that the hexagonal prism will actually look something like this. Okay, so there you can see the base, and there you can see the corners going to the other base. Obviously, this is going to be hidden detail, because if you look from the front view, from the left side, okay, I want to draw a left view. Whatever I see here on the left, I've got to draw here. So I'm going to see the bottom base, but not the top one. So that's going to become hidden detail. So now your left view will look something. <clears throat> now that we have our left view here, we want to make it a sectional left view by cutting it. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go to the front view here on the cutting line. And there you can see we're cutting one, two, and three lines. But this line, this one, each represents two corners, one in the front and the back, and then we're cutting the base there in two places as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to plot our points over to the front view. So we go here, we're cutting the corner of one, and we're cutting the corner of six behind it. So we take that across, and we mark it on six, and we mark it on one. So you can see why the numbering is so very, very useful. So remember, if you number the left view, you just take the numbers from the front view, take it across, and you can number it. You can see that they actually add up. So it's two and five there. And once you know one and two, then obviously you just go around clockwise and number it as well. Okay. Um, and then the second one cuts the corner of two and five. If I go across, it cuts five and two there. And then it cuts the base in two places. Now, the reason why this is so useful, the numbering, if I'm kind of draw, taking this line across, you don't know if you're cutting it here or here or here. So by knowing that it's going to cut the base there, so it's cutting two and three, and then four and five behind it, then you can clearly know exactly which part to cut. So you're going to cut the base corner there, and then the side, and then the front corners here. And then you can immediately go, and you can connect those points, okay? Now you'll see that I've actually drawn the red here is meant to be solid. And then there is the cut surface. Now, why did I not leave the top? Well, again, if we go from the left side, you will see that whenever I cut something open, the whole point of that cut there is to see the cut surface. So if I remove the bottom part, then I wouldn't see it. So I have to remove this top corner. So the top one and six and two and five will fall away. And there you can see it as well. The top one and six and two and five will fall away. So then, because they want us to add the hidden detail, although it's a bit of an oddity, the a hidden detail on this area, where the part that's still left, so the hidden detail from there to there to there must still be shown, okay? So if I take the left view away, then we must also add the hatching with the hidden detail. So you can, there you can see uh, the hidden detail going there, okay? And there you can see it going down, disappears behind that solid line, and then it goes there. Okay. All right. So it will look like that. Now, in order to do the top view, what we're going to do is 
we're going to go and do the same as before. This time I'm going to use the bounce line, okay? So because we have a front and a side view, so it makes the top view a lot easier. So I'm going to take the points from the top base and the bottom base, and I'm going to take them down. And then I'm going to take the six points from the side view, one to six, and I'm going to bounce it off the bounce line and take it across. And you'll see that they're going to meet in different places. Now, how do you know if you have this grid here, how do you know where they meet? Well, basically, if you've numbered both views, you go down with one and six, and you take one and six across the bounce line, and where one and six line up, you'll have your points there and there. Okay, so if you follow the numbering, then it becomes a lot easier. For example, the top base is two and five, the line goes down there. So if I take five and two to the bounce line, it will line up with the same points. That's how you know exactly which points to plot. The same will be true for the bottom base. So if I take one and six down there, then I go to the side view, then I say one and six, okay? So I take one and six to the bounce line and then where they meet, so the points from the front view and the points from the side view must just collate here in the top view. And then I'm going to connect the points. You'll see there, if I'm looking from the top, you're going to see the top base, not the bottom. Okay, so the top base is solid, obviously, and then the bottom. So the top view will look something like this. And then, of course, you also have to add the hidden details. So if they asked you a normal top view, this would have been the answer. But obviously, uh, we're going to cut it, so it's not going to remain like this. Okay. Now, to cut it, again, uh, it's going to become very, very easy. It's basically the same method as before. We go to the front view, and we, again, take the three points where it's been cut, one and six, two and five, and three and four, and we mark it on the corresponding numbers. Again, if you want to, want to number the top view correctly, you go to the side view, five, and you take five on the bounce line, and then you know those two are five, okay? Then you say, for example, four, you go across with the bounce line, you mark four, and once you know that's four and five, you just keep numbering as you go around. So you want to number from one view to the next, okay? So then I'm cutting the corner of one and six here. I take it down, so I mark six and one. Then I go from this point here, I'm cutting two and five, so I'm cutting five on the side and two on the side here, okay? And then three and four on the base, it clearly cuts the base there, so if I go down, it has to cut the base on that side and that side. And that's how you know it doesn't cut that in detail about the base. And then obviously you can again connect the points, so there's our cut surface, okay? And then you want to draw solid what's going to be left. Okay, it's very similar to the top view. So if I look at it from the top, I want to see the cut surface. So again, that little corner there or that part, the small part has to fall away. So again, one and six in front is gone and two and five, and you can see it's missing here as well. And there's the cut surface. Okay, then I can add the hidden detail that's supposed to be a remain. And there you can see all the hidden detail that is left. Okay. Please don't forget to hatch. Now you'll see that the first hatching, I went 45 degrees to the right, okay? About a centimeter apart. I did the same thing here, but this time I went to the left, okay? And there you can see the bottom base with the even detail and the side and the back, okay? And now why is this part not cut? Well, if we go to the top view, the, it cut the base there, which means that this toe here, coming from three and four, is still left. So three and four there, that little toe is still left in the top view as well. Okay, so if you follow it logically and you use your numbering correctly, you actually don't have a lot of problems doing it. Okay, so next we're going to add our view on the left side, which is of course the right view. Okay, so again, we're going to follow the same procedure. We're going to find our original prism. And then we're going to cut it. So I'm not going to do that again because it's the same method as before. But you'll see that this time that the view on the left, the right view, if I'm looking at it from the right, okay, I'm cutting it through the front view here. I want to see the cut. So this time I've got to remove the bottom part, okay? 
which means I'm only going to see this small piece here on the left side. Okay, you can see the base there. You're going to have the hidden detail corner running down, and then you're going to have your cut surface sitting here. Okay. And these little corners that you see here is two and five, just a tiny little bit that's left here on each side. So you'll see here, this is the right view on the left side. Okay, so, and that's basically how you plot your points. Now, that's not quite the entire drawing yet, but we've done about 80%. Okay, so now that we want to finish, they do say in the question that we have to add an auxiliary view showing the true shape. Now, if we have to go in the direction of this line, okay, perpendicular to this line, we have to project. So we can't really go up here because there's simply no space. So our only place we can actually project to is roughly downwards. Okay, so we are going to project. First, I'm going to find the true shape. This time, I'm going to draw it as if this part here at the bottom is the only part. So I'm just going to ignore this toe completely, going from 1 to 2 and 5 to 6. I'm going to ignore this completely and just draw the bottom. So I'm going to start with a true shape. So I'm going to take the cutting points first. Okay, so how do we find the points? Well, again, we want to draw an auxiliary view in this area. Okay, it's an auxiliary view because it's not left or right or top. So we want to draw a view in this area at this angle. So if we follow the rule, we go back over two XY lines, we hit the first XY. Then we follow the projection. Okay, we hit the line. And then when we go back to the previous view there, we hit the second XY line. Okay, and then we can measure. So we can are going to measure everything from this view. We could also have taken the measurements from this view or the top view. OK, but we decided to basically use the left view on this side. So I measure from the X, Y to the point, from the X, Y to the point, from the X, Y to the point five, from the X, Y to the point two, from the X, Y to six, from the X, Y to one and so on. So you're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six distances that you have to find. And if we take those same distances and plot them over to the auxiliary view, it's going to look like this. And again, you can just connect the points to find the true shape. Okay. And then you want to draw the rest of it. The method is the same. Okay. If you want to draw the rest, you take the base points across. Okay. So let's say one and six. You measure the distance for six. You measure the distance for one. But the lines you project obviously will go from the base points from two there and from three, four there. And that will give you. The base point. So it's exactly the same method that you use to find this view you used when you did that one. Okay, so it's the same method for each view. The only real difference between this view, top view, and this auxiliary view is the angle. Okay, but it's effectively the same method. And you just follow as before and you add your hatching here and your hidden detail behind it. Okay, and that's it, guys. If you follow your numbering properly, uh, you project 90 degrees from each view and you measure the distance back over two XY lines, you should have no problems doing any solid geometry.